just to get a chance to tell you guys, but working with you guys have been so professional since day one and your stuff is so good. It's funny. The, the episode that I think I was looking on my shoulder was the, the guy from, um, um, Pickers, American Pickers. Oh yeah. 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 So it's insane. My mom calls me up. My mom's 75 years old. She goes, what's that show? The one with the two guys. <laughs> I love that one. The guy was on there from that, that Pickers thing. I watched the whole thing. She, I mean, she called me on the phone for that. So you guys are doing it right. So my mom, 75, mm -hmm. she, she never watched a podcast in her life until we put these on and she, she loved it. So, wow. and she related because it was one of the, you know, she watches the Pickers with my dad here and there. So it was pretty cool, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Just to get that call. She couldn't figure <laughs> out the name. It was that, that show, that show, <laughs> <laughs> the two guys. <laughs> Welcome to a brand new edition of the Talking About Cars podcast at Two Tired Guys Production Zoom Studios. New episode because on this podcast, everybody has a car story. Even me, I'm Randy Crudeau. That there is the guy who has a bunch of stories. Hot Rod Bob Beck. Coming up this week, yep. we're. Did you notice we're like really nice? We've we've uh, shaved. Well, almost. Uh, or Seneca, that's your that's your goatee thing. I had one, but I'll probably get one back eventually. Uh, let's see. We have, a, of course, we're talking to the big guy today, the big cheese, top dog, big kahuna of PowerTube TV. Brian Stone is joining us, and we get to look into the mind of the guy who brought us back from limbo. Yes, he dusted off the show, gave talking about Cars New Life, and we get to ask him what the hell he was thinking. Yeah. Nicest, most polite way. Yeah, <laughs> I just cracked me up. I don't know. So we're, Brian's going to join us, and and the major reason, aside from telling us we're nice guys, uh, he's going to talk about really what's going on in 2024 for PowerTube TV because yeah, this continues to be a streaming network that's on the rise. Really, I mean, it there are more and more shows. Uh, some of their shows, I'd love to say it was us, are getting huge numbers. We we yeah. will eventually but we will, uh, we will with your help by the way yes i don't mean bob's help i mean your no help. uh we're going we to want you yes <laughs> we want you as a new viewer so that's right friends and and again we've been having some fun doing it because we get a chance to talk about things like some of the shows we've done recently by the way uh i don't know if that you can see behind us <clears throat> power tube tv here that is the big logo. That is a big logo there. There, of course, wherever my fingers are pointing, uh, that is the original logo from Talking About Cars, uh, that when we were on Odyssey. Now, of course, we have the Power Tube TV logo with the fire, which you are yeah, probably- we're on fire. Fire. They they added that on. And you know something? I'm getting used to it. I kind of like it. I like it. I think it's hot. Sizzle. Sizzle. So I think it's it's certainly a lot of fun. By the way, I don't know. Just a moment. I got this in the mail this week. I don't know if I showed you this. They have mail up there. I want to say that I'm officially old, but this is my this this is my uh, 25 year pin for POCI. Oh, huh? If I can get it up there. That bad. What's a POCI? Pontiac, uh, Oakland. Club International. Oh, she I'm, did I'm a Pontiac, Pontiac fan. I'm a Pontiac yeah. guy. I got a couple of Pontiacs. So, okay. uh, you know, you've seen you've seen me use the cars on the show yep. as background and that kind of stuff. So, uh, out of the clear blue, 25 years has gone by since I got into the Pontiac Club. So, how about oh. the devils? Who says I wasted the money? I so, got yeah. It. So let, let's see. Your annual dues are X, and they sent you a little tchotchke that cost them X and made of that was solid an expensive chocolate. thing. Made solid of chocolate. solid chocolate. No, I'm solid chocolate. No, it's not chocolate. Not chocolate. Good no, milk. Reminds me of a chunky. Yeah. Oh, chunky bars. I remember those. Yeah. Oh good. yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Talk about anyway. sugar shock. Meanwhile, I can hear the boss going, Randy, get to the show. I'm sitting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You can't keep the boss waiting. So let's go ahead and get to it. Uh Brian joining us. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how he got into the production business and all that. And that's coming up. Yeah. Your way in three, two, one. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. 
uh, Brian Bassone, the chief of Boss One Media and PowerTube TV. Note, by the way, the spelling of his last name. And to make it official, because so many people have asked, uh, you didn't change your name to become <laughs> more media friendly, right? Your your first last name isn't like McGillicuddy and you just changed it to Bassone to become Boss One, right? Yeah, no, that was a, it's a God given thing or, or a family given thing. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's funny you say that because I, I've actually got like, we had a meeting not too long ago. One of the people left my sit, they spoke to Ray and says, what's the whole idea with the boss one thing? They just think it's some sort of like, you know, cocky <laughs> thing. Like my, my email is like Brian Besson at, at Gmail. Right. So it's Brian boss one, I'm like, Oh boy, big boss. Nope. My last name is Besson. My dad's Don it was given that name and, just kind of works out for me. There we anyway, go. Another mystery. All right. And the, and the crazy part is I've never worked for anybody but myself. So I am the boss of myself. Boss one. There you go. Yeah. Well, okay. It, it works, Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely indeed. So we, uh, we of course, of course, I could never get away with that because every time I wanted to take her Dune and turn it into something, it always became Lorna Dune, which was the cookies. And all I <laughs> would eat those. I had no idea <laughs> any of that. So. It didn't yeah. work at all. And and back, you can't. I mean, that's beer, right? I'm yeah. back, yeah. Back is back. Yeah. Back is back. Or or do you play guitar by any chance? You know, Jeff back? No, but my son's name is Jeff. Okay. <laughs> well, then Yeah, he, he accuses me of naming him after the guitar player. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I really didn't, but it worked out that way. <laughs> Funny how that all works out, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, very good. He is, like I say, the big cheese, and we're going to get a little chance to talk about all things going on in the world of Brian Bassone and, of course, PowerTube TV. But first, let's start off as we do in the beginning, and let's get right to the meat of the matter, and, of course, automobiles. Uh, we've talked, you've talked, I'm sure, about your first cars and all that stuff, but where did you really get the car fever? Who Was it a, a relative? Was it just you sitting at the freeway looking at people drive by? How did that start? It, it's it's very interesting that you asked that. So if my grandmother, who is still alive, 95 in two weeks, wow. said that I could sit in the back window of the car and name all the cars at like five or six years old going down oh, yeah. through. I used to live in New York. We go through New York City through there and I could sit in the back and point out cars. So it was something that just kind of came naturally. And of course, my dad was a car guy. My dad had a 64 Barracuda. You know, he had a, he raced that. And then one of the biggest influences was actually really in the beginning was my brother, who is really smart. He's hands-on, always that guy that doesn't matter what it is. He'll just take it apart and put it back together. His first car was a Monte Carlo, 1970. And we just decided to take the motor out of the car. It's good old days, pull it with a chain from a tree and rebuild the damn thing in the garage. Never worked on a car, never worked on a motor. And I was like wow. enthralled, like what is going on here? And you watch him just do it. And he actually put it back together and it ran. Now, granted, he put it together in next to a coal bin back in the mid eighties when we had the, you know, all the gas problems and stuff like that. And it didn't last very long, but he pulled it apart by himself. He put it together and actually fired up and drove. So from that point on, I was kind of hooked. And then I went right into, in high school, I, you know, I did, I did decent in high school, but I really was my niche or my, passion was cars and i went to votech auto body repair and refinishing and, and mechanical stuff and i just never stopped from there it just literally has never stopped from that moment on great teacher um and i worked i got a job in auto body right in high school and i went out on my own after that doing house to house detailing and then snowballed into a shop and then snowballed into a performance and installation shop for over 20 years so i built custom cars and uh, you know that's that's where it all kind of started. I'm just a car guy. I like cars. Isn't Good. that great, Bob? The naivete part of the whole thing, because did, and I don't know about you. I assume you had a similar experience uh, of of jumping into a car repair and not realizing what you were getting yourself into. Oh yeah, many times. Still today. I've been kind of because I remember. I've been, on my 64 Dodge that my mother used to have, it was like, well, if you can get this thing running and not overheating as it drives around the block after sitting for days, then it's your car. So I said, of course, I threw it in the garage. 
I put it in, I said, huh, well, let's change the transmission fluid in the filter. What could possibly go wrong? And at about halfway as I was unscrewing the bolts underneath the transmission, I thought, well, this seems a little weird. Shouldn't I put a pan down or something like that? And uh, well, you know, the good news was I, I fixed it and the car ran and I had myself a car in high school. The bad news was I had to bring the mop out and well, you know, the rest is just... <laughs> And you had red hair for weeks. <laughs> no, just red fingernails, that's for sure. So absolutely. So Brian, you know, you talk about getting involved in, in that kind of thing. And as far as cars are concerned, I was it a business you really wanted to get into the, the car, the business of automobiles? Because you did more than just produce shows. You were doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I mean. Well, really, the, the full story comes from that. I was about 18 years or so, 17, 18 years into my performance shop, sitting in a dyno, I had a dyno and stuff, and I'd spend every day doing that. The car would go on autopilot every day, same place, work on cars. It was great. We had fun. Um, but you kind of get burnt out of, you know, the same routine every day. I mean, it was it was good. And then, you know, my life changed when I went to, I've been to 22, 23 SEMA shows. And one of the beginning ones years ago, I was walking through SEMA and I look over to the left and there's this bald guy um, and this good looking guy sitting next to him with this little tiny TV with a VCR and says, and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. He's like, and they go, hey, would you race for titles, your car? Would it be something you do? Because I kind of looked at the screen. I was looking at the show and I looked at him. I go, yeah, yeah, I do that. And they were like, you would? I go, yeah, why not? And, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking TV show, good for marketing. That time it was OCC Choppers and Jesse James and all those biker build-offs and different shows are coming out that were really popular and really good for marketing. I'm a marketing guy by trade. I went to school and that's my deal. I'm like, okay, well, if I get on this show, I can market my business. You know, not thinking you truly do lose your car. It was pinks, <laughs> lose the race, lose your ride. Yeah. And so I kind of signed a thing and gave my card. He gave me a card back and forth and didn't think anything of it. Went on through Christmas, New Year's, and all of a sudden the phone rings. Hey, Brian, this is Rich Christensen from Pink's. Smoked you back at SEMA. Are you still interested in racing your, racing a car for titles? Then you have to really think. Uh, okay. And my dumb ass says, why, sure, why not? It's only a car, right? <laughs> You know, I used to, you know, I'm not going to lie. We raced on the streets. We did our stuff. We Deer Park Avenue, 231 New York, Fountain Avenue, then DC. We raced over there. So we had a had a bit of a background in, in racing track and other things. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and my shop had been, you know, around so long that we had like, um, I'm not talking, I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to car parts. I mean, I've got above me in our storage above here, above the uh, studio, I've got, enough to build like four Mustangs, a couple Camaros and stuff like that. I just can't get rid of stuff. I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a, I'm a builder. I like that, but I know I'm going to need it. You know that deal. Mm -hmm. So in that shop, I actually had like 500 square feet that was loaded with enough Mustang parts to take off stuff and Ford stuff that I could build 20 cars. So I'm like, eh, you know what, what is nothing really to lose? You know, I mean, it's just sitting there. So I said, yeah. And uh, that's where it all kind of started from there. And I showed up, uh, we built a car in three weeks to race on pinks for titles. Wow. We built a coupe box body Mustang from a shell and put a 418 Windsor stroker in it, 13, 12 and a half, 13 to one, two stages of nitrous hidden under the dashboard. Nobody mm -hmm. knows that. Still watch the show. You'll never <laughs> see it. Um, and the guys on the show never even figured it out. Matter of fact, it was funny. The only people that really knew about it is the, the um, production crew came to a Walmart where we were finishing the car because it wasn't even done yet. And we had the cow panel off and they're filming down and there's the nitrous bottles and all that stuff under there. And I started my relationship with, with the show there and it just snowballed. I got called up again. I won, I, I won a vehicle and then got called, I think in this season two. And they're like, Hey, you know, we got somebody that backed out. You're an idiot. You did it. You know, you did it once. You might do it twice. You moron. <laughs> and I'm like, well, shit, I'm a moron. Why not do it twice? So I said, all right, wh when, when do we have duty? He goes, well, you got about, 13 days. I said, what? 13, it was about 13, 14 days. It's in New Jersey, which is good. Cause I was in Maryland. I said, oh, that's not too far. 
And so I said, sure, why not? And I proceeded to put a Camaro out of the junkyard together in 12 days, 13 days. I was sitting in Atco, New Jersey with a stroker motor and nine inch rear and all this stuff like that. I was very lucky to have a great crew that was around for a long time. And we just synced up. We could build a car in no time. I mean, at one point we had five mechanics, four, four, four mechanics, the dyno running, two guys up front. So we were like a machine, you know what I mean? And uh, it all started from there. And I started working. After that, they, you know, they appreciated that I could build cars and I could fix things. And I started helping behind the scenes with cars that would come out to pinks. Uh-huh. Because the problem with, 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 you know, show business, everybody wants to be a star. Everybody wants to bring a car out. But when the car's on the line, they don't exactly bring the greatest thing out because the car's on the line. Half the cars wouldn't even run or wouldn't, you know, weren't finished. And I'd actually have to help them finish it in the parking lot to get the actual shows done. Did that for a while, helped with some casting. And then Pink's All Out came across. And then I got asked to be on that show from there, which was pretty amazing. That's where I, that's where I started getting into production. Cause then I started, I'm a kind of guy that looks around and um, I learn from things and from people around me, smart people. I surround myself with really smart people and I really pay attention. And I learn. And it was kind of a neat process between the whole production side, doing the pink show and then pinks all out was just immense. It just went from that little show to, to pinks all out. A lot of people don't know how actual huge that show was we had 90 crew member and we had our audio was is uh larger at that time than the tv show survivor and wow. it was just wow. insane oh budgets were insane but the process i'd watch it i learned it loved it and honestly was looking for a way to get out of going to the damn shop every single day of my life and when the opportunity came i, I took it i sold the business and went on the road with fox television speed and never looked back from there and here we are today you know sorry long story but that's that's you know, how it's, I am here. That, that, that's great because, you know, it, it's amazing how sometimes you're back into something yeah. that becomes a passion. And that's exactly what seems to happen to you. Yeah, think about it. I start, I start working on cars 16, 17 in high school, all the way through. Worked on cars all the way through 2010. Was able to sell the business and continue on the passion that I wanted, which was, hell, I went to every damn racetrack in the country with 25, 30,000 people screaming, met awesome racers. I mean, the racers for Pink's All Out were just the best. Just salt of the earth, great people. They were all there, like-minded people doing like-minded stuff, having fun. It was all about the community that was built up around it. And it was just an, an amazing deal. We we did even further stuff. Rich and I went beyond and we did a thing called Arm Drop Racing. We would do 13 Pink's All Outs. And then we did 23 live events during the same year almost 110 plane trips I did in one year doing this stuff. But I went to Puerto Rico, Canada. We did everywhere. I mean, it was just insanity. We got called from the Caribbean to come out there and do pinks all outs. We've got called to go overseas to Australia, England. So at that time in my life, it was like, you know, you're, when you starstruck, you're just, I was just awestruck about everything involved. And the best part about it was, I was standing next to four or 500 cars racing every single weekend with awesome people so it's, i still love it i miss it to the day you know this is and one of the things i'd love to get back into and that's one of the things we're going to start working on bringing back was there yeah. a, a, someone who seemed to be a mentor or someone you looked up to and said you know that's i want to do that someday and that's how you kept moving up the ladder or were, were you pretty much self-motivated you know i don't know if it was a person or just the whole the whole production side, the television side, the automotive side. I think it was more of, you know, the live event was the thing that really caught my eye. You know what I mean? I was just impressed by the track owners and the way that the structures and everything went together that when you go to a track that you could, it was almost like orchestrating this massive, you know, undertaking. It wasn't like, I mean, when we went to, we went to, you, you talked to Bill Bader, the owner of uh, Sun Motorsports Park. He asked him one of the biggest events they ever did. When we get, we opened up ticketing for Pink's All Out for some motorsports park, there was 5,000 racers tried to get on in line for 500 spots. Ooh. It, could, it shut it down, so they tried calling on the phone. And it shut the phone system down all around the track. It literally shut the phone systems down. And to, 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 for that kind of event to go on, we got there. 
people had been camping out across street on Wednesday and Thursday. We don't race till Saturday. I got there and to watch him orchestrate the way that that track went and other track owners that you, I just was, I was like, I'm all about structure and everything. I'm like, this is really cool. I could get into this whole live event thing and, you know, all the logistics of it. And I really love that stuff. And I was impressed by the track guys and that throw in some great TV coverage and doing the TV stuff and the way he filmed it. It was just that thing that I think that was my overall motivation was the whole process, you know what I mean, around it. Not many people were doing it. I mean, think about it. We were doing it. How many automotive television shows were there or racing shows? There wasn't any. I mean, yeah. Rich was the pioneer of all this stuff. I mean, this is all his idea. I mean, it just went just went nuts, you know? 1.2 million viewers every Monday night. I mean, come on. That's, that's nuts. And of it, course, that, that was great. It was a great idea because no one was doing anything even remotely like it. No. No, uh, and the numbers you get, I mean, that rivals an NHRA national event. Well, you say that we went to Z-Max Raceway when they first opened the four wide, and two weeks before NHRA was there, that was when they were boycotting. They didn't want to run the four wide at all, yeah. so they ran two and whatever from there. Um, and one of the greatest experience was I. We came in two weeks later, and Bob Brockmeyer was there setting up the the. You know the the what do you call it? the scoreboards because they scoreboards, didn't, yeah. we couldn't figure out how to do we we wanted to be the first four wide, and um, the problem is scoreboards needed one two three four. So Brockmeyer came in and was working on the programming, and I was helping him. We were trying to figure it out, and, and we were testing the cars out for the one two three four thing from there. But we came in on that race and put thirty three thousand people in the stands. Whoa. And the and NHRA only did like twenty something, so we put in more people than NHRA. Wow. It was when when I walked out, I walked out in the middle, and you know you just kind of like you get in your own world because I'm doing numbers in the back and this, and we're walking back, and you know I walk back out and I go like this, I go, and I went like that, and I went like that, and I said what, and I said to Rich, I go, what did you do? What did we do? How did look at this? We just got you just got to stand back and go. Yeah. You know, you know, the whole Barnum and Bailey thing, the greatest show on earth. Well, this is it. This is the pinnacle. It doesn't get any bigger than Z-Max. It doesn't get any bigger than this. For grassroots racers, I mean, these are not John Force. He was nowhere to be found. It was not one, yeah. not one top fuel driver. These were just guys next door. And they drew in 33,000 people. It was just sick. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's where we need to get back to. That's That's my goal in life. Bring back the elevated stage that we created with Pink's All Out for the grassroots racers. I mean, we always used, when we had big racers come in, they were the sideshow. They make one or two passes. They were exhibition. You know, they come on and do their thing. We had NASCAR drivers. We had you know, NHRA drivers. We had everybody on the damn show. But they were only there for like 10 seconds. It was mm -hmm. all about the grassroots racer. And that was, that's what my person, that's what really this is all about. You know, Power Tube TV is, is, was built to create a home for, automotive people, automotive content shows, things like that. And to make it big enough that it's that elevated stage that it's, that's needed, you know, for a pinks all out to come back. So as the network grows, we could say, Hey, we're bringing pinks all out back and millions of people here. And then they could all come out and enjoy it and race through from there. So power tube TV to me is, is the replacement for the old speed channel and it's that's what we're doing we're just trying to grow it and grow it and grow it and with great shows like you guys are putting on with this podcast and we have 22 other shows and we've got all kinds of other nutty stuff coming up for 2024 here you know and we're going to talk about forward to that too. we're going to talk about that in a little bit go ahead bob no we're looking forward to that now uh, there were other shows that were created after pink's all out were you still part of uh some of those things rich did I, you know, that was a lot of stuff like pastime was uh, done by High Five Entertainment. And you guys obviously know Ray Eddings. Ray Eddings was an executive producer on that show. Mm -hmm. He worked with Martin Fisher and they, they, that was Rich's idea. That started with a little deal that they popped up that was, came up with Rich and, and, uh, and Ray did, um, it called Name That Test Into. They, they tested okay. it out. Yeah. So one of the things that we want to do too as well, and we're going to start working with is, um, on a Monday night, Bob Becker said, we need more, we need more shows. We're willing to put a budget ahead of this and uh, come up with some ideas, Rich, and some, you know, things like that. And they called it launch hour. Launch hour was a one hour, one hour block 
on Monday nights that we did, they did. And what they did was they introduced, they said, all right, here's a budget. Um, this much for each one of them produce one to two episodes each. We're going to let the fans and we're going to let, you know, ratings dictate what is the next show. Um, there was blow it up. I forgot. There was a bunch of other ones. There was like four or five that Rich came up with and you guys will figure out which one stuck, which is pastime and drag race high. And those are the ones that, that made it through pastime, just, you know, cult favorite, crazy, insane, fun game show from there. But I was not involved with those. I was at that point, I was still doing the live events. They were going simultaneously. I was all involved with the whole things all out stuff. I mean, like I said, that one year um, behind between the live events and the live events TV stuff, 50, it was, let's say 22, 40 something, 50 events I had to do. So there was no time at all. I would literally get, I would, I would leave on Thursday morning or sometimes Friday and, or I think it was Thursday. And then I get back Sunday night or Monday morning. And then I would unpack, put the stuff in the wash, put it back in Wednesday and hit the road on Thursday again for a whole year straight. Like I said, a hundred and something plane flights. I think I figured out got some massive mileage. Just put it on there in my credit card, but yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was, it was fun. And we got, we got to do crazy stuff, but yeah, but we, all those shows right now, the pinks, pinks, a lot pastime drag race high. I purchased all those. It took me six to seven years to pry them out of the hands of Fox. We had contracts for five years with them to make episodes of pinks all out. Um, but they would never give us the international rights because those shows were still airing internationally. And yeah. our deal with them through the contract was if we made more, we had to give them the episodes, literally give it to them, no cost to them. And then we can only air in the United States. And that never worked because, you know, discoveries and, and history channels all wanted international rights. Mm -hmm. The only person we could find to actually do something with was uh, Jim Libertor, who was original head of, speed channel um he went to go work for the outdoor channel and in 2015 we struck a deal to try it out on his network and uh and people a lot of people don't know that we kind of we did a, a pinks all out week in 2015 with rich christensen gavin jerome um Kel christensen we were all back everybody was kind of back together in a little reunion kind of deal um and because of the outdoor is the same client you know basic viewer I mean, people that shoot guns race cars, let's be honest. Hunt, fish. I mean, we're all, I mean, that's generally what it is. On the Tuesday night, we replaced the show. I think it was something, I forgot what it was, Alaska Outback, something, whatever, the plane deal. We picked up viewership 70% in that time slot. Mm. The only problem was, at the same time, they purchased Duck Dynasty, and they had international, and they blocked had a blackout duck dynasty and us and we did i mean we did great they wanted it they came back and said there's a problem we need international because we can't black out international there are, all of our affiliates are pissed off that we blacked out duck dynasty and we blacked out your show and we need it and it died on the vine right there that day we couldn't do any more because i went back to fox again and i begged and pleaded i said I, this contract does not work they didn't care uh, we started throwing numbers around for years, up to a half a million dollars just for pinks, for the brand. We were that close. It would take, the problem is we would no negotiate and it would take weeks just to get an email back. It's when you got Fox's money, it's small potatoes. So long story short, we landed up getting that, um, getting the shows from them uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, but that's where we are right now. And that's, those are the shows that are all being aired right now on, well, there's pastime. Right there. Yep. So and those of you watching, we were at, we were just before we went on, our show was actually on PowerTube TV behind Brian. I think you, yeah. you said you were watching it on Roku, right? That's Ro that's Roku right there. Yeah. Roku. So we we were on, which was funny because we were actually watching ourselves, watching ourselves. Oh, yeah, watching on, ourselves. On Roku. ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a mirror thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was television <laughs> and reverb. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, visual reverb. I like that. That's yeah. absolutely true. So these shows were so great for you and still are because they're running on the on the network, and I'm sure they're one of the top shows on the network. And, and you and I have talked about this on the side from time to time, and I don't. And I'm just curious, 
there might be some interest in either starting to reproduce some of these shows. I mean, or or maybe come up with a whole bunch of new ones. Is that still on the table being considered? Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, the big push. So 2023 was our, we'll call it a building year for PowerTube TV. I mean, we're still building. I mean, this is Roku, Fire TV finishes up in a week, and then we got Android TV and Apple TV following from there. At that particular point, the building's over. And it's time to really execute. You know, we're we have we still haven't aired all of the pastimes, but we pretty much aired all of the, and we 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 basically we we reintroduced it or we, you know we premiered all the shows pretty much up until date, except for a pastime all of them. And the idea from there was simply this: gather, you know, basic feedback if this were these were viable shows that people wanted, and you know, see if it was something that's worth investing with, and maybe you know gain that gain that that analytics and you know from what we see or what our airings and well let's put it this way between pastime drag race high pinks and pinks all out in the first um uh, four months five months mm -hmm. there was four months was one million view hours not one million views one million view hours wow. that was equivalent to 15 14 years if you do the math of people watching this and at this point, between all of the outputs, meaning Roku, our streaming site, uh, WatchPowerTubeTV.com, um, our Android and iPhone app, um, and everything combined, plus the YouTube and Rumbles, we are approaching 2 million watch hours of all the content on PowerTube TV. 2 wow. million watch hours. That's in less than a year. I mean, remember, we started this in June 18th of last year. We're not even a year. You know, we started the push back in... in PRI back in, in uh, the year before, but we, we hadn't really fired up this network until June 18th. Mm -hmm. And it was two months after that Roku came in. So we're putting together numbers right now for the analytics, but the numbers look really good. And heh, Rich Chris, Rich Christensen, call me. The very second you're done with this podcast, I have news. <laughs> Where do you got? I'm not lying. We're not live. <laughs> I just want to let you know we're not live. He's not monitoring it. Wait, wait, look. <laughs> Rich Christensen. <laughs> oh, there he is. He's listening. Okay. Yeah, Great. Say hi for us, would you? Yeah, he's I met him. He just called me before a little while earlier today. So we still we still have that relationship going. He's got things going on. He's doing finding the fastest human alive. He's all kinds of different projects, but he's itching possibly to do what? Pinks or pinks all out again. So yeah. you know, it, it's it's one of those things that with what we gathered and, and the momentum we have with these shows, it's happening. It's just gonna happen. Honestly, I've had uh, two phone calls or when I was out of PRI, I spoke to uh, uh, Bill Vader out at uh, Sun Motorsports Park about possibly doing Pink Soul out there. Mm -hmm. um, I was speaking to um, Virginia. I was talking to uh, Maryland International Raceway, which is Royce Miller, who was actually on the show. Royce actually gave us a date in July, um, but we're waiting the options. We'd like to do something in September to give it six to seven, eight months and gather that momentum again, continue on with it. Uh, and of course we need sponsorship dollars and we need, you know, everything there. We have the equipment, we have everything to do it. Um, it's just, a, it's a large undertaking to shoot that kind of an event again. And it's not cheap. And my goal is not like, you know, $10,000. My goal is to raise a hundred thousand dollars to give, you know, for prizes on pink all out hundred grand. That's, that's my goal. So anybody who sponsors out there want to jump on board and be the heroes for grassroots racers, the only racers in the world that actually buy your products and don't ask for them, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the truth right there. And it'll be on all the outputs, you know, so we'll film it and we'll create multiple shows out of it. And uh, it's going to, it's going to happen. We just, we need that support from racers. We need their support from sponsors, from tracks and, from moving forward, probably starting February, we're going to start the push. We just got to find that date that works. Um, and my goal is, is September. Um, another big one is pastime. Pastime, same, same situation. We've actually kind of, we haven't signed a contract, but we, we have something going on pretty big when it comes to revamping. Ray wants to bring the show back in, you know, version 2.0. It's his baby. Same basic format, some twists and turns and different things added to it, and possibly with a new host. 
Brett Wagner is going to get all upset at seeing this and stuff like that. Not saying that, you know, we may not use them in the future or something like that. But the point is we want new blood. Um, we They want this to be 2.0. We want this to be something that is, you know, a relaunch of, and we don't want the same old, we want the same old plus we want some new twists and new things added to the show itself. We want to make it a live event. That's that's my gig because once again I'm a live event guy, so we want to get more involved. Um, we want okay. we want to get the fans more involved with everything. We want to make it not just a, a, a you know where before it was just shot and then from there and there was really no crowd. We want to make pastime a, an event that we have interactive interactivity with with fans as well, and you know maybe some of the decisions you know things like that. So we're going to revamp it. We're going to update it, and we're going to make it. You know, 2.0 is going to be way, you know, way bigger and better than one. And if you thought one was good, two is going to be, you know, insane. Um, and another one, obviously, is is Drag Race High. That's a big passion of mine. That was two rival high schools that had, you know, uh, Botech or Bosi's classes or mechanical from there building two cars. That's a tough one logistically because of all the school stuff involved and and, and you know insurance stuff. But that. That's that will happen in the future too as well. We need same thing, you know. We need sponsors. We need, you know, dollars from there. We need, you know, schools that are willing to get involved. You know, we want to give away scholarships into that. I mean, everything we're doing is to is to benefit or is for the grassroots racers and the grassroots builders, and the guys next to you in the garage next door. I mean, that's that's what Power Tube TV is for. It's you know, it's by racers, by builders, for racers, builders in all kinds of different genres, not just drag racing, you know, off-road, everything, you know? Mm -hmm. I see. That's great. I mean, that those shows, like you're saying, they drew a lot of attention. Uh, they've started kind of other events trying to copy what you were doing. But yeah. to bring it back, and to bring it back in a positive way like you're doing, that has got to be... Well, it's going to be one heck of an undertaking. And like you're saying, you're not going to be ready for the first one until September. That's yeah. the goal. Yeah. But, it's, uh... been, it's, it's every time we do an event like that, people don't understand what it literally takes to pull off something like that logistically. I mean, crew, people, ticketing, yeah. working with the tracks. I mean, so we don't want to, and we could do it in July. I just feel that September would be more time to gain momentum and preparation from there how, how, what's the difference between producing a show like that versus producing a network really a streaming network because obviously there's a lot of effort that goes in you're talking about that right here but you're taking that and then adding on starting to do more productions talk about that a little bit exactly so you know to to build a network <laughs> you know basically i'm that guy when you tell me you know, if you don't want it, or I can't, you can't do it, or, you know, I can't do it. I just do it. And, you know, one of the things was we actually got called by Motor Trend to buy Pinks and Pinks All Out. And that's why we went and got, went back after Foxford and we ended up getting it with new, some new blood that was in Fox and got a deal done. And then the Warner mar merger came in and $4.8 billion worth of, you know, budget went away and our deal to work. And basically it was, I was going to, you know, sell the rights to it, but I was going to stay on as executive producer, run the shows, work with them on new stuff and build it out. And that's really the dream. That's the easy way. You know, hey, you know, boom, I got a job, I get paid. You know, I got the whole deal for God knows how long. Well, when the Warner merger went and the budgets went away, the deal just got like everything else got scrapped. I mean, you know, for what I'm hearing, Street Outlaws is now done. So, I mean, a lot of things got cut and put to the wayside. They weren't looking anymore for, you know, drag racing stuff. And I'm like that guy, I'm like, you know, if you don't want my stuff, you, the network doesn't want my stuff, I'll just build a network. Don't piss me off because I'll do it. And that's really, you know, uh, it's terrible, but I have that problem. You know, it's like, you know, don't tell me I can't do something. That's the worst thing. I'm that guy, but I'm even worse. I can go even worse to the point where I'll build a freaking automotive streaming network just because of that. And that's what we did. But, you know, it sounded like a great idea when we started, but you're right. The the What's involved is a streaming network, PowerTube TV is a fast channel. Basically, it's a it's just like linear television. It runs 24-7, 365 days a year, and it's like a, a content-eating machine. You have to keep feeding it. 
and feeding it and feeding it new content. And that's all we've done over the last six months is literally between SEMA, PRI, I've gone to special events like Jeep Invasion, all looking for content creators that maybe have some really good stuff but aren't getting any traction or maybe there was a, uh, a series that maybe that didn't get picked up, same thing with Motor Trends that was a really good idea. And we, we're giving them that that stage or that platform to try it out. That's that's our deal. We have a content creator development program that Ray works with that basically we help out, you know, uh, content creators take their, their content to the next level to a point where we feel it's good enough to go onto our network. You'll actually watch some of the stuff like, um, you know, we just stop grunting back there. <laughs> Assistance, there, there are always so much trouble. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't me. <laughs> um, the, uh, that's like a race with Mason. You know, he started off with a great idea and Ray has been working back and forth now with him. And if you notice the shows just keep getting better and better from there, mm -hmm. more content. There's a couple more out there. And that's like some of the new stuff that we got coming out as well. There's just, we need to feed the beast. And that's the biggest problem. It's logistically wise. We'll go back to logistics again. We've got it. We've got a really good program, CDN host, and people that are on board that make it run 24-7. But unless you give them things to put on there or edit and produce, it's you're watching the same stuff over and over again. Oh, look, there's cars and coffee exposes on behind us. That was an right. idea. That was I met him at not this PRI, the one before. Went up speaking to him. He saw in SEMA that we put out we're looking for content. And we had a meeting out there. I met with him out at Gainesville Raceway. He was looking for some ideas. I said, No, this is not where you want to go. And he took on uh, Damian Harvey decided that he was going to invest and he did. He invested in uh, uh, producing Cars and Coffee Exposed. He trademarked the whole deal. Ray helped him in season one, put together and crafted a show. And it came out really, really well. He went back to PRI this year, SEMA this year, mm -hmm. and achieved enough um, support from sponsors to do 24 episodes this year. They're right. in Scottsdale right now shooting. Um, they picked up uh, a bunch of sponsors, big money, and it worked out well. And his stuff is literally just on PowerTube TV, which makes me feel really good because sponsors felt that what we've created here on PowerTube TV was worth the investment for a show like his. And mm -hmm. I keep telling guys like you that you got to leverage that, get the sponsors. You know, the, we're, you know, you see, uh, it's funny to race Mason to bring back in. He's always doing some goofy pitch to like, hey, we got a flat tire. And he does this, you know, the tire fix a flat if you need that. Or who's your tire? Smart moves in there because this stuff takes money to make, as you guys know. Um, but there is, with the mediums and, and OTT platforms that were going out, we've literally given creators like you <clears throat> and new partners uh, uh, something well beyond YouTube. You know, I always say this, we were in meetings, we go, you can walk into a meeting, let's say you're a racer or a content creator or something. You go into a meeting with a sponsor. One guy, you're both doing the same thing. One guy says, oh, I'm on YouTube and I got these, you know, got this show and I do. And the other one goes and I'm on, he goes, yeah, I create them on YouTube, but I'm on Roku, Android TV, Fire TV, on there, blah, blah, blah. I'm on PowerTube TV. Who are they going to get behind? You know, use the leverage, leverage what we've created to do that. And that's what they're doing. And we're, we're getting, we're getting the results out of that. We've got, I've had 20 something meetings with with manufacturers about using their content on these new categories that we're creating. We've got podcasts. We're doing uh, one of the categories we're doing now is you guys as well. will be on a separate channel on Roku with just podcasts as well as the regular one from there. There's three more Joe Costello from uh, NHRA. He's the uh, pit reporter and he does all the announcing from there. Right. He's got WFO radio podcast. You've got, um, I think it's drag and drive repeat from the drag and drive guys. And then you got Red, White, and Burnout, which is another podcast, which is done by um, a tuner school, which goes over all the tuning things and things involved with racing and stuff. It's pretty cool. So these are, it's growing. You know, the, the network is growing and it's and it's going to be a great year. I mean, there's tons of stuff going on, you know? Wow. That sounds we're just great you guys are with us. I never say that. I never said get a chance to tell you guys, but working with you guys have been so professional since day one and your stuff is so good. It's funny the the episode that I think I was looking on my shoulder was the, the guy from uh, um, Pickers, American Pickers. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's insane. My mom calls me up. My mom's 75 years old. She goes, what's that show? The one with the two guys. <laughs> I love that one. The guy was on there from that that Pickers thing. 
I watched the whole thing. She, I mean, she called me on the phone for that. So you guys are doing it right. So my mom, 75, mm-hmm. she, she never watched a podcast in her life until we put these on and she, she loved it. So, and wow. she related because it was one of the, you know, she watches the pickers of my dad here and there. So it was pretty cool, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Just to get that call. She couldn't figure <laughs> out the name. Just that, that show, that show, <laughs> <laughs> the two guys, <laughs> two guys. Yeah. Yeah. Two guys. Well, exactly. Thank you for that. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for that. Well, and the interesting thing, too, is to talk a little bit about the website now, because uh, this is obviously Roku behind you. But one of the options to see stuff is the website, which is watchpowertubetv.com. And we've talked about it because of the uh, sweepstakes that are going on and and watchptv.com. Yeah. And you can go there and there are so many different ways to watch. A, a example, one of them, of course, we have, and I'm sure everybody else has, I'd love to say, oh, well, we have, and nobody else does. It, there is actually a Talking About Cars page where it's all talking about cars all the time. You basically go there and they have show after show after show of talking about cars. And frankly, my family loves it. <laughs> but if it, as far as the rest of it, it's just, it's just fun because we never thought that we would be so it's it's different it's as you said it's one step up above youtube you know people could watch youtube and all that but the, this show it, it looks professional we're on and it and it's just like we have our own network and and i know bob never in a million years thought we would get something like that yeah you, you have your own channel basically what we've done is this is i took all the pieces and parts that I, that I saw from you know all different ideas now we call this a fast channel fast channel means um it's got we'll have ads placed in there you have that ability to do it yourself um but it's just like linear television we give that option to to you know to our content partners on main page you come on you click on it there's the one you'll see roku everything shares that's the beauty of it all is it's simultaneous if you can watch it on our on our web page watchpower2tv.com at the same time roku you could pick up the app and you could you know, go to download the app. You could watch watch it right now. It's it's all time together. Mm-hmm. But if you want to go further into it, and let's say you really like one particular show. So let's say I like, you know, talking about cars. And I drop down below on there and I say, oh, big thumbnail, big button. I go, boop, takes you right there. And basically what we created for you guys is that is your ecosystem. That is your channel. It, everything about there is all about there. You've got your about page, which, Gives the history of you guys, all this in, you know, information. You've got some merchandise we share on there. You've got video on demand. Like if you want to see season one, two, and don't want to wait, you can rent that right there, which is awesome. Just click on there. Mm-hmm. And all that is all teed into special things like uh, our network. Like you, you mentioned, our network um, uh, sweepstakes with uh, the first one we're doing is with Dennis Anderson. You can win a ride, a big experience with Dennis Anderson stuff. You know, rents, rents, you know, uh, the podcast and get, bonus entries into the sweepstakes that's the idea like buy a shirt get bonus entries into there so everybody needs in, to in case money. you don't know dennis of course is behind grave digger and he was the guy that originally yes. so yeah. so he's offering and we mentioned this on the show many times but he's offering a ride uh in a monster truck i mean yeah. how cool would that it's, be right that's, that's yeah it's not it's not just a ride it's actually dinner with dinner at, at digger's diner on his property this is in north carolina um it's his uh museum that he has there grave digger museum it's called rust in peace it's called it's vip tickets to the spring fling which he has a full mud truck race going on there with all the monster trucks and the mud racing trucks wow. which means you get front row center with him uh, a personal tour of everything with him the whole it's a family too so the family you can take the family with you the winner and they'll do a family truck on the monster truck nice little slow over the bumps and wow. then the real one is called king sling which is the I think it's three seats. He sits center and two behind. And basically the winner gets to go in a real monster truck, does, you know, wheel stands, nose, jumps Ooh. over things, runs over crap, does, they call them, you know, do the, the yeah. donuts and speed donuts, they call them and all kinds of crazy stuff from there. And it's, it's not just, you know, it's just, it's a full on experience. You, you know, all you gotta do is go to watch power tv.com. It's free to free to enter, but you know, we encourage going over there, renting a video, renting a podcast from these guys or another creator or buying a shirt. You're going to get up to, I think it's up to 50 extra entries to win that prize. So, you know, mm-hmm. that's that's the beauty of it all. I mean, you, you could you could watch great shows and you could win great things and have fun and it's all family oriented, you know? Wow. That's hey, so- Randy, let's let's enter 
and then we can video right from the back of the thing. Okay, yeah. we'll talk about that. Yeah, we're okay. gonna be there, so we'll video you in the back of the truck, video <laughs> and us. There we go. You. That may be Just a video, like and we'd be watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're watching, yeah. You watching. Yeah, yeah. It's that so okay. you, you, there, you mentioned things like merchandise and that kind of stuff, and I know we have a T-shirt with the uh, other logo on there, but the the fire logo, but. Um, just just to let you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea if we could get a coffee cup, not with the fire logo. Just just thought I'm throwing that out there. Just throwing it out there. You yeah, know? we can do that. Yeah. All right, just checking. Oh, we that's here. We are. There's our there's our uh, there's our uh, other there's the other one. Yeah, coffee cup. Yeah, we got a few oh. of the originals, but uh, we ought to have like the updated ones. That would be a good idea. Okay. And I'm sure everybody wants to start their day with a. Talking about cars, about cars fire, fire cheap logo. Plug, cheap plug, cheap plug. <laughs> yes, just saying. My show, I can I can do all the lo- uh, plugs I you want. Do what you want, do it. do it. I'm yeah, all about right. doing plugs, man. I'm all about plugging. It's all about marketing and stuff. That's Absolutely. what this is all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. If the boss comes on the show, guys. plug away. Hey, that's what I say. Uh, this only sure happens with a couple others before we leave, Eric. Yeah. This only happens from the support of the, of the people that watch and stuff. So if you love this right. stuff, Support these guys. I mean, we want to see more. Buy a shirt, buy a mug, rent a series, whatever. And you get to you get to see, you know, these lovely gentlemen. Bob will right. autograph <laughs> your mug. There you mug. go. And Put your mug on the mug. Autograph your coffee yeah, I, we, we can have numbers underneath our chin. You. And, uh, you know. <laughs> Put your mug on a mug. Yeah, Put that's a, yeah. Yeah. No, that, That's not a bad yeah. idea. Okay, so just so we remember where we're at, because I know we've had – Little by little, we've had new and different places. We let's just go over what we were talking about earlier. We can see PowerTube TV on Roku, which is right behind you. Yep. Uh, uh, Amazon Fire TV, mm-hmm. Apple TV, uh, Samsung Smart TV, Android TV, YouTube, and Rumble. Although yep. YouTube and Rumble a little more d- a different presentation. But uh, what are the ones I missed? Do you remember? No, that sh- that should be well the the. They could go to the iOS and Android stores and download the app. So yeah, ah. these two, yeah, like I'm watching. If you look again, okay. you know, it's synced up with the ones in the back over here. So you're watching the same thing that's going on back there. It's funny. It's there you go. It's probably two, yeah. two, sec- two seconds behind, but it's the same show. That's okay. Two seconds. So you can watch. You can watch. You know, uh, talking about cars on their you know hour on the main. Power Tube TV streaming site, mm-hmm. their own channel, which you could watch every single episode available on there. Then you could download the app, watch it on your iPhone or Android phone. You could turn on Roku, watch it. Very shortly, you could turn on Fire TV and watch it. Shortly after that, you could watch it on Apple TV and then Android TV. If you can't find it, I don't, there's no help. You're lost. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're gonna get the direction. Yeah, I don't know what else to do. I can't do anymore. I've done I've done enough. He's Go done Google enough. The man has for... done enough. Yeah. Reward him and us by yes. watching the show, finding out where we're at, and tell your friends. Yep. We got some <laughs> we, we got some new great shows coming up coming up in 24 that uh that really is gonna start turning the turning this thing up a lot too. You allowed to tell us what they are yet? Uh, yeah, I can I can fill you in a couple here. Give us a hint. Well, I told you about the podcast number one, but here's the Cars and Coffee Exposed returning for season two. Drift America is returning again with more episodes from there. Um, Ed Beard Jr. You saw that he's part of that sweepstakes. He is a very talented uh, airbrush artist. We work with him right now. He, that will be coming up later on in the year. He's going to have his own. He's building his actual studio out where he'll be doing. Uh, vehicles right in there he's known for vehicles for years but he's actually building a studio just for this show which is going to be incredible from there um we're partnering we partnered up with the um the uh southeast gassers association and we'll be doing a behind the scenes and kind of a uh on track but more about the racers themselves so it's called the the southeast gas association that's where he's working there's 10 events there starting i think on march 23rd through november 2nd and we'll bring we'll bring you pretty much all the action. Um, Drag Drive Repeat, which is that podcast from there, and Red White and Burnout, which is a podcast, but it's also our friends over at the Tuning School, Bob Morelli and his daughter, who are creating content right now. Basically, he owns a tuning school, and she, you know, basically teaches people how to tune cars. But the, him and his daughter also race, 
and they race each other in, uh, in some of the SEC, I think, in a couple of different spec racing classes. And they have kind of a competition going on. So it's a father-daughter kind of, you know, how-to kind of racing kind of competition show. It's going to be really neat from there. Dream Garage, which is Ray's show, rating show, produced that one. That should be airing, I think, in a few weeks. And then um, I don't know if you watched the Robert Downey Jr. show like you guys. Yes. On your show there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, we actually, yeah. No. Remember Gillen's Custom Designs, GCD, where they did the interiors on that car, those cars? Uh-huh. Right. So, so, so Gillen and his wife actually uh, signed up. They're producing, I think, these two or three episodes done. It's called um, Married to the Ride. Or the rides, and basically, it's it's Gillen's wife building custom cars out of the uh, Gillen's custom design, which is GCD. Um, we've got we got the two first episodes in; they look great. We got the sizzle reel and a couple promos came in; they look really good, very well produced. We're, they're really good people too. They're, I think they're out of Georgia, um, so watch for that one. I think actually, because it's married to the rides, it's going to air on Valentine's Day, so that'll be oh. the first episode from there. You know, kind I, of think, I think all family members who have a car person in their family need to see that. Need to see how everybody gets along. See? Yeah. Yeah, she right. runs the show. Don't mess with her. I've uh, seen the show. <laughs> she knows how to run that thing, boy. She, she's the business side of it. He's uh-huh. the creative side. She's got to reel him in. You know, reality is on how to make these builds get done. It's really good stuff. And they got, man, you got to see some of the cars they put together. Well, you saw what they did with with Downey Jr. show, what yeah. they, did, yeah. they did interior, I think, two or three of those cars, if I'm not mistaken, not more. Wow. Um, but yeah, and then of course, like I said, we are we've been diligently working, diligently working on new categories, which is the podcast, like we said, more racing. We're doing off road and outdoors car culture, which is going to be drifting and other shows like that, and more car shows, um, informative and builds. Informative, uh, we I just got back from uh, out in. Uh, Tennessee for the engine performance expo. They've got 120 episodes of tech that's going to be airing shortly here. Um, yeah, there's just all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, it's just starting. Let's put it that way. If wow. we, if we could lock in a quarter of what we, t- of who we talked to um, during the last three months, four months, we could have another 15 plus shows coming up here, which would be great. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, big one. Um, so we put it on our, our, from, uh, on our social media, right before SEMA, we get a call from, uh, John who has a, uh, auto body shop out in, uh, I think it's Philadelphia area from there. Um, he says, we, you know, John, John is, is worked with us on racing on, uh, the call out and some other stuff like that. And he says, I always want to work together. We want to do something. He says, I got a call from a gentleman who wants me to build this this vehicle for SEMA, but we only have 10 days. He goes, can we film it? And so it's, it started in nine days. So it's called nine days to SEMA. And uh, we followed it all the way through from Pennsylvania, um, all, all the way out to Vegas. We shot it out in Vegas during the SEMA show. We did the reveal out there. It went out in the, in the main section out there. It was pretty cool. So that's coming up here from there. Um, That was, that was a crazy show nine days to build i'm not going to tell you what it is but it was it was a a, a race support like van volkswagen thing you know right. it's kind of neat but it's coming up too as well i think that's that should be done pretty shortly but that's wrapping up pretty much all of the the kind of shows that we have in the can for the next like month or two it's just going to continue on throughout the year bob i have chills yeah i know just wanted to let and you know you guys are, you guys just keep producing great shows so it just keeps going on and on yeah, it's our boss likes us. That's a good sign. That's it. Yeah. And, and, we, and we've got some good stuff coming up uh, next well, next week. Yeah, that we're too. We're going to be uh, we're, we're going to be coming to you uh, from uh, Grand National Roadster Show. That's right. Oh, nice. Some a bright future ahead for all yes. of us. So that <laughs> that'll certainly work. So yeah. well, well, Brian, I appreciate the time for you to join us. And don't forget, everybody, to follow us on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. And as we've often said, our website is watchpttv.com, watchpower2tv.com. Uh, and of course, uh, the shows just keep on coming. And we'd love to hear from you. Uh, get some feedback on what's going on. Uh, if you've been watching the shows, any ones you really like or like even more, let us know. 
Of course, we're at talkingaboutcars at gmail.com. And, and let me know, let them know that you guys want those pinks passed on to driver guys. Because right. I'm going to invest in it, but I have to know that you guys have my back. I've got your back. You got to have my back on this one. This is a large investment. Go out there, please. Tell your friends about PowerTube TV. You've got so many choices. Download the app. Whatever it is, tell a friend. I'm working for you guys, the grassroots guys, and for, you know, thank you guys for having me on. But support PowerTube TV, and I'll support everybody in the automotive industry. <laughs> Till next time, take care, everybody. We'll see you uh, on the next show. Bye-bye now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, sir. Like this show? Want more? Then head to WatchPTTV.com, the new 100% free PowerTube TV streaming network. Home of the best classic and new motorsports racing and build shows on the web.